If you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably heard me say that if we have a system of equations on this new digital SAT, we really don't want to be doing algebra. We just want to graph it, and we absolutely can, and it is really easy to do here. But maybe this question is like the exception where it, it is very easy also to do algebra. So the reason is that the first equation is barely in an equation at all, right? Y equals 76. Like it's written as an equation, but really this is kind of like just like a point that we can plug in. So if we start to think of it that way, this doesn't become a system anymore. Very quickly, it's just solve for x, right? x squared minus 5 is the only equation, and now we've substituted in for 76, or y as 76. And you can solve this in two different ways. I think what many of you learn in school is to get x by itself, so you're going to add 5 to both sides. But I think that that's a bad habit. I think that we learn that um, when we're kind of new to x squared situations and, and we, we kind of form a bad habit, basically the real thing that we should memorize is that anytime we have an x squared, we really want to get things equal to zero, right? So when we have normal linear algebra, no exponents, our move is actually to get everything away from the x. That's how you first learn algebra and that sticks with you. But as soon as we have an x squared, things are a little bit different. So your real habit is when you have an x squared, do the opposite of what you normally do. Bring everything towards the x so that you get an equation that's you know, going to look like a quadratic. So 0 equals, in this case, x squared minus 81. And then we're supposed to factor. And this is one of those special factoring situations where we would have difference of two squares. Hopefully this looks familiar because it definitely comes up on the SAT. We would look for uh, taking basically the square root of each component and then those are the two terms. One is a plus, one is a minus. So x plus nine, x minus nine. And this is how we get two solutions. x is equal to negative nine and x is equal to positive nine. They're looking for a possible value and so there you go. B is, is one of the two solutions. Now, if we had done it the other way and added the 5 over the other side, we might still have gotten that. We would have gotten um, 81 is equal to x squared, and then most of you would have taken the square root of both sides. The problem is, technically, that square root symbol just gives us the positive root. Some of you might have remembered to take the negative as well, especially because that's an answer choice. So hopefully it would have kind of like gotten you in that frame of mind. But I don't know, this is not technically the best way to do it, considering everything we're supposed to know about quadratics, and I do think it reinforces a bad habit. So I really like the way that I did it, even if it looks worse. However, all of this is moot, because most of the time we are just going to want to graph something like this. Here I've done it, and you can see that there's only the blue line here. This is the standard uh, setting they have for the, for the graph, so we are going to need to zoom out because y equals 76 is very, very high up. So we can just kind of zoom. I'm going to keep pinching, and there's the red, and we can tap these intersection points. It should, yeah, yeah it's going to let me do that. So the two intersections are 976 and then negative 976, and since they're asking for the value of x, we're going to use the negative 9 and the positive 9, just like I solved for in my equation. Um, especially if you're not good at algebra, the graphing is the way to go, and I do think that most of the time on the new test, when you have a system of equations, just graph it. It's going to be much easier and much faster. I just thought, you know, this is maybe the one exception, and I'd show you the algebra just in case you're more inclined to that.